out there, this is Buzz with a Survival Buzz. So everybody out there knows about food shortages, right? It's no secret, especially if you're a prepper. And especially if you're watching channels like this, I'm sure you know they're already here. And by all means, just by going to the supermarket, you can tell, right? Unless you're just completely blind and ignorant. Uh, but I was reading an article this morning. I'm sure of you probably have already read it. Uh, a few of you have probably already seen some videos about it by now. The YouTube's move quickly, right? But uh, I kind of wanted to go over this for some people out there that may be clueless of really how bad the food shortages are around the world right now and how bad they are becoming. So I wanted to go over this with you. I'll leave links down in the description box if you want to read the whole article and kind of look it over a little bit better. I'm merely just going to go through and just kind of highlight some areas and kind of talk about it. So here goes. Uh, now we all know that good old Uncle Joe came out not long ago and talked about, you know, there's going to be food shortages, pretty much get ready for it, uh, which is no secret, but, you know, when you have the President of the United States coming out and talking about it, well, and it's every, in everybody's face and they're no longer trying to hide anything, you know it's about to get real, right? So along with that, now one of France's most important government officials is telling everybody they should brace for an extremely serious global food crisis, right? So now we have the president here and then somebody in France talking about it as well. Uh, and it is being reported that food prices in the German supermarkets are going to go up anywhere from 20 to 50 percent um, very soon. Um, rationing has already began in Spain. Uh, there's sporadic shortages of eggs, milk, dairy products, and then, as well as following the outbreaks of the war in Ukraine, um, they're rationing sunflower oil now as well. So, rationing in Spain. Uh, rationing has also started in Greece now. Um, and then, this is a big one for me, um, BlackRock. And if you don't know who BlackRock is, you can do a quick Google search and there's tons of information on it. I could probably do an entire video on just that, but... Uh, the head of BlackRock is warning that there will be the, for the very first time in this generation, is going into a store and not being able to get what they want. Um, and, you know, that goes for the younger people mainly, but, I mean, there's a entire generation of, of people walking around out there of all ages um, that are clueless, honestly. So, but that was a big one for me. BlackRock's a big one. Um, and then since this time last year, some fertilizer prices have gone up as much as 300% now. Uh, many farmers in Africa may not be able to afford fertilizer this year at all. Um, being projected that this will reduce, reduce agriculture production by amount capable of feeding 100 million people. It's a big number. And, of course, we all know everything going on with Russia and Ukraine right now. Well, Russia is normally one of the biggest global exporters of fertilizer as well. Uh, and then, Russia is also a key global player in natural gas, uh, major input to fertilizer production. So, you know, you think fertilizer stuff is bad now, it's, it's going to get really bad really quick. Um, as well as in a typical year, Russia and Ukraine collectively account for approximately 30% of global wheat exports. And I talked about a while back, um, I actually just bought 150 pounds of wheat berries not long ago. Um, and where I bought them from, they're not even available anymore. So if you have the means, the money, and it's not hurting you too bad financially, and you can find decent priced wheat berries, I would definitely, definitely buy some of those in storm and I'm gonna have a video very soon on uh, putting things in mylar and storing them for a long time and um, wheat berries are gonna be one of them that I'll be doing in that video so hang tight and I'll get a video out for that for you people out there that have no clue what you're doing uh, and half of Africa's wheat imports usually come from Russia or Ukraine so it sounds like all in all Africa is gonna take a big hit here other nations rely on wheat exports from Russia and Ukraine even more than Africa does, though. Armenia, Mongolia, Kazakhstan, 
Eritrea, I don't know how you pronounce that one, have imported virtually all of their wheat from Russia and Ukraine. So that's going to affect them pretty big. Um, and one Russian official is warning that his nation may soon only export food to friendly nations. Hmm. That's probably not going to be yes, I would imagine. So, as well as on Friday, it is announced that another 5 million egg-laying chickens in Iowa would have to be put down because of the bird flu going around, evidently. And now the death toll from the bird flu in Iowa alone is pushed beyond 13 million as a result of it. Um, overall, this is what the total national death toll from the bird flu currently looks like. 22 million egg-laying chickens, 1.8 million broiler chickens, and 1.9 million pullets and other commercial chickens, as well as 1.9 million turkeys. So, eggs, chickens, they're going to become a thing of the past, which is all the more reason to get your own. And I'm telling you people, if you have the means, I mean, they're inexpensive, they're cheap, they're easy to take care of. <coughs> Excuse me. And even some neighborhoods allow you to have up to six leg laying hens and one rooster. So look into it. If you're thinking, I can't do this, you can. It is not that hard. I'm probably going to do another video on that very soon of just the basics of taking care of chickens. Because um, it, it is super simple. I mean, if you can take care of a dog or a cat or a goldfish, you're golden. It's not that hard. The worst part of it is just going out in the elements to take care of them. Um, and China's agricultural minister has announced that winter wheat harvest in China could be the worst in history. There again with the wheat, right? Wheat is a very, very big crop worldwide. And um, during a recent interview with a U.S. farmer, stated that Americans won't like it when your grocery bill is up a thousand dollars a month, and that's from a farmer. And then the head of the UN World Food Program says that what the planet is now facing is unlikely, unlike anything that we have seen since World War II. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Guys, this is just getting worse and worse across the board. Um, if you're not preparing, you have to start now. You have to. The time is running out just completely. I know prices are expensive, but let's face it, they're only getting more expensive by the day, right? So I don't care what it costs. If you have the money, if you're buying one can of peas for dinner, and you have the money, buy two, buy three if you can. Buy a whole flat if you can. These things are not only getting more expensive, but they might not even be there altogether, right? And, you know, even if you don't have the capability to store wheat berries and don't have the money for that sort of thing, flour is fairly inexpensive, even though it's gone up in price. And you can get quite a bit of it, six months to a year's worth, and it will store. So start getting things like that now that are going to be of high demand or not even available, right? Because um, I don't know about you, but once wheat is even more insanely priced than it is now and, and rarer and harder to get... I would love to be able to make bread and have a loaf of bread, be able to make a sandwich, have bread with my dinner, whatever it may be. <clears throat> so at least go out and get some flour and things. Um, I mean, yeast is important, but you know, there's tons of videos and things, information out there on, on making bread and biscuits and things without wheat or anything like that. Um, knowledge is power at this point. So, you know, beyond storing all this food and just, you know, keep stacking it to the rafters, you guys need to be learning things. I mean, I, there has not been a night that hasn't gone by in the last week or two that I haven't watched an hour or two of gardening videos, right? It's becoming very important that you learn anything and everything that you can to help you and your family survive. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a bit of a cough today. Um... You have to learn the skills, and you have to keep prepping and putting food back. 
it's just getting worse and worse. And if you think these trickle down effects aren't going to eventually hit you or somebody that you love, they're going to. They are going to. And some of the stuff I just read you from that article should be enough to make you believe if you don't already. So that's really all I had to say today. I just want to tell you guys, keep stacking it. Um, keep learning things. Keep learning skills, gardening, livestock, everything you possibly can now while you're able to. Um, because the grid could go down tomorrow. I mean, I, I don't think it's going to, but with the way things are going, I wouldn't doubt it, right? I would not doubt it one bit. And it's become to the point, you know, I like going out and buying nice things, but it's to the point with me, if you don't think I'm a believer, I spend every spare penny I have on food and supplies and things to grow things and raise things and you name it. So these things are very important. So just keep keep prepping, keep stacking it to the rafters. And as always, like this video and subscribe if you like what you hear. And I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Later.